Um, thanks. Hello. St. Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Jesuits, a great teacher of discernment of spirits, discerning God's will, prayer. He had this, uh, called the spiritual exercises, which are a, a whole kind of retreat for conversion. It was a tremendous tool in the early days of the Jesuits, but it has continued throughout their history. It's still available today, highly recommended. I did one myself. And one of the little tools that Ignatius gives, and he's, he really understands the spiritual life, and I think is a great master of the spiritual life, especially for beginners. He gives some fundamentals that others like Teresa of Avila or John of the Cross, they presume on, they don't, they don't tell you how to meditate really. Well, they do in some places, but in a lot of their teachings, they just kind of, they're saying, well, I'm, I'm not talking to beginners. And off they go because they had so much revelation of the later stages. Whereas Ignatius is brilliant on those initial stages, especially stuff like discernment of spirits, which I've talked about with you before. And I wanted to just bring up one little point that he brings up in the spiritual exercises. So in his guidelines that he gives to spiritual directors when they're directing someone in these four or so weeks, usually a 30 days uh, retreat. And that particular point, that little point that he makes is about returning to grace, returning to a grace. So it's, it's not about like returning to grace as in converting and going to confession and that kind of thing that is covered very much so in great detail in the retreat program. But um, it's returning to our grace. And what he means by that is when you come to a time of prayer, if you were blessed in a previous time of prayer, for example, your previous, your like yesterday's time of prayer, you had some uh, insights, some meditation that you got a lot of grace from. You maybe were deeply consoled. You had a lot of joy, peace, maybe tears. You're deeply affected in your spirit by that prayer time, by that topic. Ignatius highly recommends, don't go on to another topic, go back to that same grace. Return to the grace. Now, this could be not just, well, yesterday's meditation. This could be, you know, last year's meditation. This could have been yesterday's Holy Communion or Sunday's Holy Communion. Or was there a, a word that you heard in a podcast or in a homily that really spoke to your heart? It, rather than trying to uh, figure out a new, uh, like digging a new well for today, it's like, oh, I need to get something fresh for today. If yesterday's well is still good, then stick with yesterday's well. Now, this is very similar to what St. Francis de Sales teaches us about prayer. And I, I believe I've mentioned this to you before. He gives the image of a bee returning to a flower. And he says when in, in the midst of prayer, if you're meditating on something and it's really feeding your spirit, you're, you're really being moved, you're feeling a deep connection with God, don't move on. Stay there. Stay there until it's not feeding you anymore. Until, it, you know, that, uh, that flower, the image of St. Francis, that, that flower is, is, there's no more nectar in there. So when that happens, then the bee goes to another flower. So that applies in St. Francis de Sales example to during the context of one prayer time. Whereas St. Ignatius then kind of takes that basic principle and applies it more broadly to any prayer time. And one thing that I, I wanted to particularly bring up is returning to the grace of your conversion. Now, some people can't put their finger on, you know, oh, that was when I really decided, you know, yes, I'm going to follow Jesus. They didn't really have so much of a, a conversion point. Or for others, they've got piles of them every week. It's like, oh my gosh, I thought I believed last week, but this week I really believe. And that itself is a tremendous grace that you're continuously progressing and, and growing in your appreciation of, of the active ways that God is blessing you. Father Andrew Apostoli in uh, my community is deceased now, but he would talk about that, this because lots of the other friars, we'd ha all have conversion stories, all the young guys. But he'd be like, I, I don't know, I've always been this way. I grew up Catholic, and then I decided to be a friar. I joined, he joined the uh, kind of the, the seminary high school really young, and then he became a friar. So he always loved Jesus. He doesn't, never remembered a time when he didn't. So it was kind of hard for him, but he could pick other times of, oh no, that was a real, like deciding to join the friars, you know, that was a time of grace. Well, what is that, what are those times for you? Because when God gives a grace, let's say of conversion, it's not finished yet. That's the wellspring from which your present faith is born. 
So if you go back to that time and just start to like think about it, just start to thank God for it. Because sometimes like the most tremendous graces, we haven't exhausted uh, or, or paid our debt of thanksgiving to God yet for our conversions. So stay there and you'll be surprised at how much consolation, how much grace God still wants to pour out from that moment, from that event into your life today, right now. This process, this form of prayer, you can also use this with the sacraments. So obviously right after receiving Holy Communion, um, just staying in that place. But sometimes, I might have shared this with you, my, my experience after Holy Communion is of utter blankness. I don't know how to pray. It's like I forgot everything. Um, thanks. Hello. That's typically kind of where it lies. And I, I just have to be with him. Uh, sometimes one fruitful meditation for me is just uh, imagining I've just received the baby Jesus from the hands of Our Lady in uh, in the stable in Bethlehem, and I just hold him. I don't get to hold babies very often, and it's difficult with the beard. I'm like, oh, baby, don't puke on my shoulder. Uh, but just to just to be, I'm not necessarily, you know, saying prayers to baby Jesus. I'm just being with him, just holding him, and that's often my my post communion meditation. But what can be helpful in that time is to think back to other. Have there been other times when receiving communion was a great grace? To let your mind go back and remember them, and just linger there. Because when we remember, that moment becomes present to us. That's how it is for our brain, psychologically. There's lots of studies now coming out, come, they've come out long since, uh, about when we do things simply in our mind, our imagination and our memories. For example, doing a sport, like imagining shooting three-pointers in basketball, you know, boom. And they've actually found that folks who do this simply in their mind develop those skills, those physical skills, almost as much, very almost as much as the folks who are actually on the basketball court shooting the actual three-pointers. The brain doesn't, uh, it seems like it doesn't really know the difference. And so too with prayer, when we remember and go back to these places, even just on a basic psychological level, your brain, your, your human part, doesn't actually know the difference. Oh, right, that this is yesterday's meditation. It doesn't. And, and spiritually, this is also true, that when we go back to these moments, we actually enter into them. And it's been my experience. It's like being right there at my conversion. It's like being right there at that time of Holy Communion. And not just Holy Communion, but of the, the consolation on that particular day that God poured out. We also can do this with confession, just to exercise our gratitude and to go back to those moments. When was my best ever confession? When was the time I came out of confession and felt, wow, now that was a confession. Okay, go back there. And especially a great way to prepare for confession is to go back and remember your last best confession and the grace you felt, the nearness of Jesus, the kindness of Jesus you felt. Do it before and after that con this confession today. Sandwich it in. It is just, it's a tremendous way. And it's kind of, we wouldn't, we, it almost feels like cheating. It's like, oh no, I'm just, all I'm doing is reliving that memory. It's like, no, it's actually, it's actually affecting me now. And St. Ignatius uh, confirms this and lots of the other saints confirm this to return to the grace brothers and sisters. So you could just make this the content of your entire prayer time today. In fact, you probably could make it your prayer time most days if you're stuck for content. I hope that's helpful. God bless you.